Hello, hello. Thanks for being here. My name is Caitlin Michelle, and we're going to talk life and esoterics because that's what we do here. So I'm thinking of kind of revamping my intro. It kind of feels awkward to say, hello, hi. <laughs> but I did that because, you know, that's how this project podcast show thingy has been named, but you may have noticed that I changed the name. I know I talked about this a while back, um, and I got a lot of really good feedback about renaming this thing to Wild Roses. So here we are, all as Wild Roses, <laughs> and that's significant because a roses actually have some of the highest frequency um in terms of the oil um and i think also just having roses in your house it just raises the frequency and this is why i always go back to my rose tea my rose tea lattes um i actually came across some information on the internet Um, about some research studies that had been done where the subjects of the study were holding a cup of coffee. They hadn't even taken a sip yet, but they were just holding a mug full of coffee. And the researchers took their frequency after their baseline, and they noticed a baseline drop just holding coffee. And then the subjects drank the coffee And their frequency dropped even further to a point where uh, a lot of illness tends to crop up. Um, Because, you know, in our bodies, with our health, illness can't take hold unless we are at that frequency. And so just drinking coffee lowers our frequency. But then the researchers took that mug of coffee away and instead gave the subjects a vial of um, rose essential oil and the subjects just smelled the oil and immediately their frequency rose back up and actually increased from baseline that is how powerful roses are but This translates to everything in our surroundings because everything is energy, everything has frequency, we are always affected by everything. And, you know, I think this is related to the fact that a lot of memories are tied to sense, or maybe it's the other way around. A lot of sense are tied to memories. And when we smell the same thing, then memories flood back. Um, And, so, you know, I, I try to be very careful now of the, well, the frequencies, the energies in my home, around my family, so that we are always healthy. Um, and this goes beyond health. You know, this isn't just physical health. It's spiritual health, emotional health, mental health, all of the above. Um, so I kind of went on a tangent there. But um, that's how important just roses have become for me. Having the rose essential oil um, at hand. And then, of course, that the, the wild aspect. Oh, gosh. You know, this is something I have an interesting relationship with because um, I feel as though as really basically all of us are in society, we're just very naturally domesticated while growing up. You know, I think they say by the age of five, we are all quote unquote domesticated. And by the age of nine, 10, 11, 12, our creativity is so hampered. Um, And that's part of the domestication process. And, you know, this isn't necessarily always a bad thing. I mean, I think tampering creativity is, but domestication, it happens naturally because we are all part of 
society, are we not? Um, but there's still that aspect I think we should all fiercely protect. And it's the wildness that we're born with. And this isn't to say we should all just go off, do whatever we want, and cause chaos and havoc. That's not the type of wild that I mean. Wild in that untamed, undomesticated aspect that just flows, just pours fiercely from our hearts. When we're wild, we're free. But I believe it's an aspect of being free, of being untamed, undomesticated, that can only have good benefits on ourselves and on society and really the collective spirituality. So I I don't advocate for wildness in the destructive sense but wildness that allows us to be empowered. So here we are, we're wild roses as the oracle card that keeps cropping up every single time. Um, I use that deck, that one deck. Um, I've, I'm, now I'm blanking on which deck it is, but I'll have to find it. Uh, if you go back to previous episodes, I say what deck it is. Um, and it's just so funny that the card just kept coming up again and again. Um, so I, I think it was a sign, and that's our new name here. And I think all of us sitting here, we are all wild roses. Okay, so let's move on to the mystical moments. And again, like I said, in my last episode. This is a segment that I do intend to hear from you. You can call in once I start going live, more details to follow, and share any sort of mystical moment that you want. Could be way in the past, could be recent, it could be big, it could be small. Not to say that, you know, anything profound is small, but um, I hope you understand what I mean by that. Um, so I, I'll share a mystical moment and this is from years ago. I was in Thailand and I was on a business trip and I had been there for about three weeks and because it was a business trip, I was limited in my ability to go out and see things and interact with the people and the culture and and everything. Um, so I did find my way after about three weeks, <laughs> um, outside a monastery. It was beautiful, but it, it wasn't open yet because in order to fit this in, I had to go, I had to wake up early and go before all of our meetings started. And so I had gone with a colleague who was also itching to see more of Bangkok, um, and we were waiting for the monastery to open up and we were in the marketplace and everyone was milling about. There were carts, um, different vendors. There were people that were doing some um, grocery shopping for the day and some of the vendors had some ready-made meals. My colleague went to one of them and he was having food made. And then I just stood off to the side and I could feel this energy take hold and it kind of just went up. I know how Kundalini goes up your spine. This didn't go up my spine through the back, but I felt it from the front. It just went up and up and up and up and then exploded. And at that moment, I could see down an alleyway, there was an elderly monk um, all dressed up in his garb and he was barefoot and he was ambling through the alleyway. No one was around him. It was just him. And he looked up at me. He stopped. And I felt this energy of mine just keep expanding and expanding and expanding. And I had this connection to this monk 
that was really unexplainable. And I knew he was seeing something. He was witnessing something happening in me. And it was funny because I had no words for it. I didn't understand what was happening except for the fact that I knew I was exactly where I needed to be at exactly the right time on the other side of the world (laughs) in a city where I I didn't speak the language, but I knew I was supposed to be there. And it took me many years to figure out exactly what he was seeing and what was happening. At first, I thought maybe it was an angel or some spirit guides or something that he was seeing. But recently, I realized he wasn't seeing other beings or other entities tied to me. He was seeing me. But at the moment that I connected with my higher self, and it was just such a beautiful, mystical moment, It's one of my favorite moments of my life so far. Up there, of course, with the birth of my son, marriage to my husband. It was just so mystical. And it's it's a memory that I call upon quite often for the feeling of it. And uh, sometimes I kind of feel like I'm chasing chasing it. I, I would love to feel that way again. And it was just so effortless. And sometimes I feel as though with all of these spiritual explorations, I, I feel as though I have to put a lot of effort in. Could be the Capricorn in me. Probably is. Shouldn't really be as difficult as I think I'm making it. Um, but that moment was so effortless. I would love to hear any type of mystical moment. It doesn't have to be like mine, but I would love to hear any mystical moments that have stuck with you or just, just like small things like seeing colors when you meditate. And, you know, I think that's actually something that I shared last week, but, um, I want to know because this isn't something that I hear too often from people, but it's certainly something that we all experience at some point. There's always some mystery, magical experience, (laughs) whether or not you believe in magic. Uh, Okay. So um, last week, I also started talking about Hoppe. Well, I mentioned it towards the end. It was things that I'm into right now. Um, And I also said that I have a lot of thoughts about it. And I do. (laughs) So, Hoppe. First of all, the way that it's spelled kind of makes me a little... uh, Because it's spelled R-A-P-E. There is an accent over the E. And it's pronounced Hoppe. But I still hate how it's spelled. mm, Yeah. So that's one of the things that I, I don't really... I don't like typing it out. And even, you know, telling people about it and then texting them, you know, where they see it spelled out. That makes me feel uncomfortable. But that's why I tend to spell it how it's pronounced H-A-P-E. Sometimes you could also see it spelled H-A-P-I or R-A-P-A-Y. So it's... um, It's a legal sacred shamanic medicine and it comes from the Amazon basin where it's been used for thousands of years and it's really emerged in the Western world within the past like 20, 30 years, something like that. Um, It is a sacred medicine and it is profoundly healing and cleansing. Um... It is made up of uh, medicinal plants, leaves, seeds, trees, um, and some other things. Each tribe within the Amazon has their own blend and they keep it secret. Um, And so it's used for all sorts of different reasons and ways um, of all different ages. Um, and I, 